Hey, good morning, it's Andy with Avid Product. I've got a couple sleds set up here. And in this video, I wanna to try to explain to you a few things. <clears throat> One of those things, obviously, is track tension. Um, Polaris' spec, uh, Avid Product's spec on track tension. Basically, how that track tension applies to the amount of force required to rotate that track, the amount of clearance in the front of the tunnel, centrifugal force, and what that means to you as someone who is concerned with getting power to the ground. So we went through and we've tensioned these tracks. Uh, this snowmobile has six tooth, three and a half drivers on it. The track is tensioned to Polaris spec and Polaris spec asks for an inch to an inch and a quarter of sag with 10 pounds hanging from the track, 16 inches in front of the rear axle. So somewhere about in here, they ask you to hang a 10 pound weight from the track make sure it droops down an inch to inch and a quarter. We've tensioned that. And then we've also tensioned this snowmobile with Avid specification. And this one has my drop and roll belt drive in it. And it's got larger seven tooth, three and a half pitch drivers with over an inch of clearance in the front of the tunnel. Whereas the stock setup only has less than three eighths of an inch. So my tension is for the, at, at rest, the snowmobiles track to hang down about a half to three quarters of an inch, roughly the height of this drive bump. Um, and I'll show you here in a little bit, uh, that looser track, how it improves performance and, uh, how we need a little bit of more room in the front of the, uh, bulkhead for snow evacuation, centrifugal force, uh, all that. But uh, like I said, these sleds have been tensioned. This one's to player spec, this one's to avid spec, and we'll go through a few different ways, seeing which one rolls easier. I've got a fisherman scale that we're gonna hook to the track and actually pull that track and see what the, see the force required. And then I'm also gonna put a torque wrench on the bottom bolt no belt hooked up on either one, no quick drive belt. Um, just got a bolt in there. And we're gonna take that, put a torque wrench on it, see how much torque's required to rotate the track. Another thing we can do is just physically grab onto the track and see how much force is required to move it. So I'll get set up and I get the torque wrench, fish scale. We'll show you guys what we're finding out. A little plug here for Avid product. As we're tightening these tracks, it's obvious that getting a 17 millimeter wrench in here to adjust the M nut is very difficult, okay? So on my offset axle, and I'll show over here, I put a flat on the outside piece so the adjuster can be moved to the outside. It makes getting to that 17 millimeter nut a heck of a lot easier for adjusting track tension. All right, let's start with the stock configured sled for six two, three and a half pitch drivers, non drop and roll, avid big big wheel kit in the back. Um, let's just hook a fish scale uh, to this track and let's try to figure out how much force initially it takes to rotate that track and then how much force it takes to keep that track moving. I'm just gonna hook this Somewhere up in here, I'm gonna to try to pull with the track as much as possible. Looks about 40 pounds of force to get that track to move. And then it looked like it dropped down to about 20 or so to keep it moving. Let's do a torque wrench. Let's start out at 10 foot pounds. 10 foot pounds moves the track. Let's and looks like nine pounds breaks. So I would say between nine and 10 pounds torque it takes to move that track. And then obviously just moving it by hand, uh, it takes a little bit of force, 40 pounds of force to get the track moving, about uh, 10 foot pounds to rotate the, the axle um, and then you can see just by movement with my arm that it's, it's probably about a two hand job and I'm not putting a ton of force on it and 
I'm not He-Man and I don't spend every day in the gym. Let's talk about <clears throat> track tension and tunnel clearance. So in this particular configuration, this is a series nine, three and a quarter track. And we've already established that with 10 pounds of weight hanging from the track, Polaris says they want an inch to an inch and a quarter of, of gap between the bottom of the high fax and the, and the belt of the track. So we know that there's at 10 pounds, there's an inch to an inch and a quarter of looseness in the system, right? With a three and a quarter track and six tooth drivers, stock drive shaft location, there's only three eighths of an inch of clearance in the front of the tunnel. And that three eighths of an inch of clearance is marginal for snow evacuation, creates a pinch point right there. Another thing we need to think about is these snowmobiles are super fast. They got a ton of power. This one's a boost. Um, and I think we could all agree that seeing 50 to 60 mile an hour track speeds is not uncommon. So what happens to the track with a 50 or 60 mile an hour track speed? Well, it starts to balloon and centrifugal force is acted upon that track. And if any of you have ever swung a ball or a, a you know, a, a merry-go-round, for example, um, if any of you hung onto a merry-go-round, that centrifugal force tries to pull you away, right? The same thing is happening with these tracks. Let's take 40 mile an hour track speed, for instance, which is attainable whether you have a boost or you have a uh, naturally aspirated snowmobile. That centrifugal force, 40 miles per hour, is acting like 30 pounds, okay? So if we have 10 pounds of pull back here and we're getting an inch and a quarter looseness, what happens up front where all that power is pulling that track forward, that pulling the weight of that track forward, pulling, what happens up front with that track going 40 miles an hour? Well, we've done some math. There's actually 30 pounds of force acting on that track. So we know there's an inch or inch and a quarter of looseness. Now we're doing 30 pounds, three times what Polaris says. So we know that that track has to be coming up into the front of the cooler, right? When it comes up into the front of the cooler, we lose all of our distance. That three eighths of an inch is gonna be gone. Maybe even more, probably, right? I mean, we said that 10 pounds gave us an inch. What about 30 pounds? We've proved that we need more clearance in the front of that tunnel. All of that, the small drivers, the lack of clearance is all gonna rob horsepower. What we need to do is create more clearance in the front of that tunnel for snow evacuation. We need to create more room in that tunnel for larger drivers. And we need to create more room in that tunnel for centrifugal force. Because we know that that track is coming away from those drivers like we talked about, with 10 pounds, it's coming away an inch. So we can only imagine with 30 pounds that that track is coming up and hitting that cooler. This is uh, basically the same sled, except this is a naturally aspirated and I've put my drop and roll, seven two, three and a half drivers, series nine track, um, and then my spec for track tension. So let's do, let's do the torque wrench test first. Remember we had about nine or 10 pounds of torque required to move that track. We'll put it at 10. 10 moves really easy. Let's dial it back to nine. Actually, let's just go to eight real quick. Looks like about eight. Let's just try seven. So it looks like about seven to eight pounds uh, required to move that track with the torque wrench. That one was 10. We'll say this one was eight and avid spec tension on the track. Bigger drivers, seven, two, three and a half. So right there, we've already seen a percentage gain, right? So we want to put power to the, the snow. We're, you know, drilling holes and bolts, making these sleds lighter. We're putting tunes in these things to get a couple horsepower. Uh, basically, we're doing everything we can to the engine to get a little bit more power. And uh, we need to be doing every little bit of work to the drivetrain to be able to get that power to the ground. Um, so let's do the fish scale test, throw this sucker out. Again, I'll, I'll try to grab it in, in roughly the same area on the track, but we're zeroed out. Yeah, it looks like it starts moving at about 20 pounds and then is roughly about 12 pounds to keep it, 
to keep it moving. So 20, 21 pounds initial, 12 pounds to keep it rotating. Avid spec, seven, two, three and a half pitch drivers. Um, this one was 40 pounds of initial and uh, it has six tooth, three and a half pitch drivers. The approximate uh, diameter difference, um, six tooth, three and a half pitch drivers, 21 inches in circumference, divide that number by pi, you get the diameter. This one, seven tooth, three and a half pitch di uh, drivers, seven times three and a half is 24 and a half, um, divide that by pi and you'll get your diameter. So we talked about the three eighths of an inch in the tunnel and how that can be a problem with centrifugal force. This particular setup with the drop and roll, which is one inch down, one inch back, and seven to three and a half inch pitch drivers, we have an inch of clearance, okay? So now we introduce that 40 mile an hour track speed, uh, 30 pounds of centrifugal force. We know there's an inch of looseness in the system. So now as that track comes around, we don't have the paddles cupping over because they can't make that corner. With the bigger drivers, we have a more efficient roll. We think that big wheels in the back is cool and provides less rolling resistance. We need to put bigger drivers in the front to provide less rolling resistance. All of these things put together creates a much more efficient drive, right? Like I said, we're spending all the money on the goodies up front in the engine. We're spending all the money um, lightening these sleds to make them work better. I think it's obvious that we put a little bit of time and effort into the drivetrain and make the drivetrain as efficient as possible. And we've just proved that there is a tremendous room for efficient for a more efficient system, right? 40 pounds to move that track, 20 pounds to move this track, I don't know about you, but riding around the mountains with my brake on is counterproductive. Put the high mark on the hill. What do you think?